Welcome, everyone. It's wonderful to see you all here, and I really appreciate your being here with me today. As we enter into God's presence, let us begin together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And to prepare our hearts to celebrate these sacred mysteries together, let us pause once again to call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
set us free. O oh God, who are pleased to call your church the bride, grant that the people that serves your name may revere you, love you, and follow you, and may be led by you to attain your promises in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the southern side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the southern side. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district down upon the Arabah and empties into the sea the salt waters which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish, for wherever the water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow, their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food, and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, you are God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building upon it. But each one must be careful how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one that is there, namely, Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables and to those who sold doves he said take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace his disciples recalled the words of scripture zeal for your house will consume me at this, the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
How can any priest not be affirmed today? Your presence here speaks volumes, my dear friends, not only to Father Michael, to Bishop Emish, and to all of my brother priests, but to all of you. How affirmed we priests feel today in celebrating this beautiful feast with Father Michael Lane. I could say many things about this wonderful priest since I've known him since he was a teenager, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, believe it or not, at St. Charles Borromeo <laughs> Seminary when he was a student and I was on the faculty. But today I would like to reflect on here I am, Lord, I have come to do your will. It was 40 years ago today that Michael Lane prostrated himself in the Cathedral of St. Raymond's and pledged his life and his love to Jesus Christ and to this church and to serve the Lord as faithfully as he could all the days of his life. Oftentimes when I am reflecting with priests, I love to share the words that the late Cardinal Joseph Bernadine shared at the last gathering he had with many of his priests. He said the priest above all is the bearer of the mysteries of God. He is a proclaimer of the good news. He is a consoler of souls. He is a friend. And I think that can be beautifully summed up if we take one of the favorite prayers of Father Michael, that beautiful prayer of Lacardaire. And this is what it says. To be a member of each family, yet belonging to none. To share all sufferings, to penetrate all secrets to heal all wounds, and to go from men to God, and then back from God to man. To have a heart of fire for charity, and a heart of bronze for chastity. To teach, to pardon, to console, and to bless always. And my God, what a life it is and it is yours, O priest of Jesus Christ. Father Michael has been able to emulate, I believe, the prayer of Lacordaire day in and day out because of his fidelity, his faithfulness. He has been able to proclaim the message of Jesus Christ because he first and foremost has been a man of prayer. And I can testify that to the 1970s when he was a student at St. Charles Borromeo Seminary. And further testify to that when I was blessed to have him during his internship as a young deacon when I was pastor at St. James in Glen Ellen. And was really humbled when he came back years later as an associate to St. Peter and Paul when I was pastor there, and I thought to myself, well, it can't be that bad if he's willing to come back. <laughs> because in those days, oftentimes they say, no way, Jose. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it is this great devotion to Christ in the Eucharist and the Blessed Virgin Mary. We have only to look at the beautiful new Eucharistic Chapel that was dedicated just last month. A dream of Michael Lane's for many years. A dream that came to fulfillment when that beautiful chapel was erected and established for the honor and glory of God. That brought so much joy to his heart as today brings further joy because of your commitment and your devotion to that wonderful project. But the contact also enabled him through thick and thin, through trial and error, through joy and sorrow, to continue to persevere. As a young priest, 
St. Paul the Apostle, just down the, just down the road here. St. Dominic's, when he was asked to go there for a brief period of time, when Father Frank Anxorus, God rest his soul, was dying. Father Michael spent a year there. And then off to the Cathedral of St. Raymond's. And finally, with yours truly for five years in Naperville. We did prepare him then for the pastorate. But you know, after that period of time, when I just think of it for all of our priests, you know, we're priests because of the faith, the devotion, and the commitment and the love of you, our people. We are energized and motivated and inspired by your faith, by your love, by your commitment, and by your care. We as priests, unworthy, frail, we all have our moments. We're all cracked at times. Some more cracked than others. <laughs> Let me tell you, you're looking at one of them right up here. <laughs> but anyway, we continue to, to love our God. You know, the Lord asked, he asked for a, a gentle heart. He asked for a soft heart. He asked for a caring heart. And that's what all of us try to do to the best of our ability. You know, and Father Michael has that, he emanates that. I remember oftentimes at night, his getting up between midnight and six if we tried to keep Abbot Thomas Havlick. When we were in Naperville, we had the retired Abbot of St. Procopius, who was chaplain at Edward Hospital. And I'd say to Mike, or to my other associate, if the phone rings between 12 and six, let's go to the hospital. We don't want Abbot Thomas, he was then almost 80 to go to the hospital. Oftentimes, Tom beat us to it. But at times, Father Michael would unhesitatingly get up and go to the hospital. I say that not only to puff him up, but to let all of us know, and for our priest in a special way, you know, when we leave a parish, my friends, regardless of how long we may have been there, we might be great administrators, we might be good orators. We might have been builders. But I think you'll testify to the fact that what I hope people can most remember about us as priests is where we tender, loving, and caring shepherds. Did we try to go that extra mile, walk that extra block, to be present to you and with you in time of joy and in time of sorrow? Were we willing to sit and listen when you were hurting? And what hopefully you remember about all of us is how we treated your sick and the infirm and the homebound. Oftentimes when I go to the Joliet Hospice, they'll tell me Father Michael had been there. How we treat each of you when you come at times with trembling hearts and hands to the sacrament of reconciliation. Do we try as our present Holy Father says, Pope Francis, tenderness and compassion. And as a great Saint Augustine would say, oh Lord, when I stand before the throne of God, I would rather be judged for being too lenient and tender than too severe or too strict. And finally, how do we treat our children? Children today still love their priest, and thank God they do, and we love them appropriately and affectionately. They have to see priests that are real, that are human, that are down to earth, can laugh and cry, and also can be with them and their times of joy and their times of sorrow. But Father Michael has also known what it is like to bear the pain of loss. At times we have talked about that because both Father Michael and I at different times lost our mothers and fathers within a period of six months. My mother and dad first and then Father Michael with his mother and dad so we knew what that was like. 
And both of us have lost sisters. We know the pain of losing people who were so central in your life. But you know what sustained us and sustains us today? In spite of the sorrow and the heartache and the loneliness, it's first and foremost that commitment, that dedication, that devotion to Christ, our own private personal prayer, our love for his mother, and then it is our families, our friends, our brother priests, our bishops, our sisters, and all of you. You are here today, whether it's Bolingbroke, Naperville, Joliet, Lockport, wherever it might be. Is anybody here from across the ocean, Mike? Uh, no. no, okay, but you're, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> you're here because you love your pastor and your shepherd and your friend. And that humbles all of us. Over the years, as again as I say, my friends, we realize that we go this way only once. But you know what I find today with our priests and people and sisters? All of us, in spite of what's going on in the world, we all have a deep, and that's the grace of God, the Spirit, have a deeper thirst and a desire to be close to Christ, to get closer to the Lord. We really do. And we can do that through our relationships with one another, our being together. And that's why a priest who is called to minister, to serve, to share, to give his life, he does that because he is supported by so many of you. And so today, you know, it behooves us, and I'm sure Father Michael would say the same thing, to thank you, our brother priest, our bishops, our sisters, and all of our lay people, you know, for your wonderful care, your support, your tenderness, your compassion to your priest. That's what enables us to continue to say, and this is truly a wonderful life, the life that the Lord has called us unworthy though we are, to follow him in fidelity, and knowing that whenever we fall, we get up again. He's always there to embrace and to love. Last week, it was my privilege to do a retreat with the Springfield Dominican Sisters, the Springfield Franciscan Sisters, pardon me. And one of the sisters said, you know, the passage I use every day is, I am loved by Jesus Christ. When I get up each day, I know that Jesus Christ loves me. And that enables me to carry on in my wheelchair, in my failing eyesight, in my arthritis, to know that I am loved and cared for by Jesus Christ. And so I conclude today, my friends, with sharing a prayer, what is a priest? Because I think this does sum up in many ways the life of Father Michael Lane and hopefully the life of all priests. Before I share that on a very personal note, I just to ask you to say a prayer at two o'clock today. I'll be back tonight, Mike. But at 2 o'clock today, I have a mass at the Blanchette Center for parents who have lost little children at 2 o'clock. Stillbirths, crib deaths, miscarriages. That mass is at 2 o'clock. And as we have this wonderful celebration here today with Father Michael, you know, I just ask that you remember those mothers and fathers that will be grieving this afternoon and that hopefully, you know, the Lord will touch my heart that I can say something that might ease that pain. What is a priest? A priest is a lover of God. A priest is a lover of God's people. A priest is striving to be a holy man because he walks before the face of the Almighty God priest tries to understand. He wants to forgive as he himself asks forgiveness. The heart of a priest is pierced like Christ with the lance of love.
The heart of a priest, hopefully, is a vessel of compassion, a chalice of love. The heart of a priest is a resting place. A priest is a man whose goal is to be a true follower of Christ, a man who lives to serve. A priest is a man who has to be crucified so that he may be lifted up and draw his people to himself. A priest is a man hopefully in love with God as God loves him passionately. A priest is a gift of God to man and of man to God. A priest is the hand of God's mercy. He is a reflection of God's love. And you know, really, there could be no greater love than that than to serve Christ, who calls each of us by name. And so as he has called Michael Lane by name from his birth, he now calls him again today as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Michael, ad multos anos. God bless you. Many more. <laughs> I'll have a few remarks at the end of Mass, don't worry. <laughs> now as we continue, let us stand together and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the maker of heaven and earth, of all visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, his worship and glorified, and spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, for the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us pray. As God's holy people, confident of his love, let us now lay our needs and our petitions before him. that Christians may be profound signs of God's dynamic presence in the world. And for unity among all baptized Christians, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may show one another the same reverence we attribute to holy spaces and places, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who seek refuge in sacred structures because of war, or violence, or injustice, for a world that is safe and just for all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who build or care for sacred buildings, for architects, builders, fundraisers, custodians, building and grounds overseers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who create sacred space wherever they gather in prayer, in cathedrals or in chapels, in homes or in storefronts, in hospital rooms or on the battlefield, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Ben Frenimore, who will be having major surgery this week. For him we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our pastor, Father Michael, and all pastors, our Pope, Father Francis, our bishops, and we, 
we celebrate Father's ministry of love, 40 years as a priest of the Diocese of Joliet. May the blessings of Christ, the High Priest, shower graces upon Fi Father Michael as he continues in ministry to the people of God given to his care. For Father Michael, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, for Jerry Comer of our parish, and for all of the deceased of St. Jude Parish and our families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, as we thank you for hearing our prayers, we ask that you keep us mindful of your, your loving presence in our midst. Help us in seeking out and accomplishing your will to daily build your kingdom here on earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, the offering made here, and grant that by it those who seek your favor may receive in this place the power of the sacraments and the answer to their prayers. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in your benevolence you are pleased to dwell in this house of prayer in order to perfect us as the temple of the Holy Spirit, supported by the perpetual help of your grace and resplendent with the glory of a life acceptable to you. Year by year you sanctify the church, the bride of Christ, foreshadowed in visible buildings, so that rejoicing as the mother of countless children, she may be given her place in your heavenly glory. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, Daniel, our Bishop, Joseph, his auxiliary, and Joseph, our Bishop Emeritus, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, and they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angels, who are often on high, and desire your divine majesty, so that all of us who do this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, unto, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of, e of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, and especially today, we remember Father Mike, Mother and Father, and his sister, and all who have gone before us in the time of faith, rest and sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To, you all, to us also, your servants, who those sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share of fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all the saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Peace be with you, Billy. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you. All right. Very good. Peace be with you. Thank you again. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you again. That was great. Peace be with you, John. Thank you. Peace be with you, Dennis. Thank you. Peace be with you, Stephen. Very good. Pause. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please join us in singing our additional communion hymn located in the music edition, hymn number 311, Taste and See, hymn number 311.
Let us pray. O God, who chose to foreshadow for us the heavenly Jerusalem through the sign of your church on earth, grant, we pray, that by our partaking of this sacrament, we may be made the temple of your grace and may enter the dwelling place of your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. It will be for a moment too because while we were sitting here I couldn't help thinking for the people who maybe didn't know this was going on today and wandered in here for Sunday Mass. <laughs> probably looking at their watches and wondering if this is the way this is every weekend you know <laughs> we're in trouble but I just want to take a moment the time of Jubilee is always a time of thanks the thanks first to God and and above and beyond that of to, to him for all the signs of his blessings which is all of you and as we uh, pause for just a few moments I want to thank first of all our, our brother priests who have taken time out of a Sunday schedule to be here with me today. So I thank you all, all of you, and the deacons as well. You know? I want to thank also all of the religious sisters with whom I've had the honor to work with over these years. Currently with our Dominican sisters from uh, Nashville, uh, special thanks to Sister Maria Catherine and the young people of our school choir did just a beautiful job. Uh, that means that was excellent. And also to the Franciscans of the Sacred Heart, my sixth grade teacher is right here in the front row. So just raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> and the sisters of St. Francis of Christ the King, uh, sister, just raise your hand so they see you're here. Sister Marjorie, Sister Thomasine, or Sister, okay, good to good, good. 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 good to see you all here. Very good. And again, I want to thank all the members of my family, some of uh, who have come a great distance, not across the ocean, but close to it, who have been here. So I want to thank all of you for making that sacrifice, again, to be here with me today. It means more than you know that you're here with me today as uh, members of our family. And as I thank all of you, there is one last person that needs to be thanked, and that is Bishop Imish. You know, before we applaud, Ten years ago, he gave me this assignment to come here to St. Jude's. For that, I am forever grateful. It's hard to believe it's been ten years already that I've been here, and I hope after ten you're still applauding as well, that he made that decision to send me here because it's been a slice of heaven. It really has. The people, our people of St. Jude's have been absolutely fantastic. When you go into the school, you're going to see there are some of the signs of not only their generosity, but above all, their faith, which I am deeply appreciative of. So. After Mass, there is a reception over in the gym. I would ask as many of you as possible, please take a few moments to come over and share some refreshments. Uh, if it's been a while, just stop in line to say at least hello for a few minutes, because again, you've made this day the special day that it is. Thank you. Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Amen.